Welcome to this second video in a three video series on plate tectonics. Today's video focuses on plate tectonic theory. I'm Aida Awad from Broward College. Our learning targets for this video are to list and describe the evidence used to support the theory of plate tectonics and to describe models explaining driving mechanisms for plate tectonics. Let's start out with some theory of plate tectonics. As a result of oceanographic discoveries and discoveries that were made during World War II, we have a deeper understanding of plate movements, and that comes from being able to identify new ocean floor topographic features, such as trenches, ages of the ocean crust, and earthquake locations. Additional information has even been gained from airplanes that have gone missing when they've done more detailed searches of the ocean floor. So our understanding now is that we have the lithosphere, which is made up of the oceanic crust, the continental crust, and the uppermost portion of the mantle. And that is less dense, and so it rides above or floats on the asthenosphere, which is another portion of the mantle that is beneath the lithosphere, which the asthenosphere is more dense. It flows like a plastic and it is uh, involved in the convection, which we're going to look at shortly, that is part of plate tectonics. So here we have in the top left corner a little model of a pot boiling away on a stove with a couple of pieces of wood in that pot in the water. And we can see that convection currents are set up as heat is transferred from burner beneath through the water and pushes those blocks off to the outside edges of that pot. So you see the convection current set up there. And you see a similar situation with convection set up inside Earth's mantle. Now there are lots of very complex models for these convection currents, but just as a general idea, if we think about heat from Earth's interior rising and escaping uh, through the surface, at some plate boundary, which we see here, where that mantle material rises up towards the surface of the Earth. So in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a little diagram that shows Earth's structure, the inner core and the outer core, but then those convection currents that are set up in Earth's mantle, where heat's being transmitted through the mantle, up through the asthenosphere, and it's causing those plates at the surface to move apart. Another little bit of evidence that we have for plate tectonics is sediment that's deposited on the ocean floor. So if you look at a study that's been done from sediment samples that have been collected in missions going across various portions of the ocean floor, you find that there is an increase in the thickness of the sediment with an increasing distance from the mid-ocean ridge, or, or MOR, and that the age of that sediment that's in contact with the Earth's crust also increases with increasing distance from the mid-ocean ridge, or MOR. So we can see in the top picture here that's a map, it shows the thickness of sediment, and if you look at that very dark blue area here, especially in the Atlantic region, the dark blue area where sediment is thinnest is associated with the spreading center or mid-ocean ridge. And moving away from that central mid-ocean ridge out towards the continents in any direction, so towards the eastern coast of South America, towards the western coast of Africa, towards the eastern coast of the United States, the sediment thickness increases because as the crust age increases, there's more time for sediment to collect and thus you would expect a thicker layer of sediment. And we see that same drawing down here with the sediment being in the caramel color increasing with increasing distance from that mid-ocean ridge. An additional piece of evidence comes from hotspots. So in this case, we are looking at the Hawaiian hotspot. So you see that there is a mantle plume of hot magma being generated and breaking through the ocean crust, forming volcanoes on the Pacific Ocean floor that when they grow to a height sufficient to put them above sea level, they form a Hawaiian island. 
and we can see the ages of those islands moving away from the current location of that hotspot, so somewhere near the big island of Hawaii, and going back through the Hawaiian islands and back through other islands in the Hawaiian emperor chain, the increase in age. Now that suggests that the plate, the Pacific plate in this case, has moved over that stationary hotspot and we are seeing this hotspot track with increasing age, with increasing distance from that hotspot. An additional piece of evidence is called paleomagnetism. So they survey the ocean floor with a magnetometer and what they have found is that there is a parallel arrangement of normal and reversed magnetic polarity that runs parallel to the mid-ocean ridge. And as you can see in this top diagram, the mid-ocean ridge is the dashed line, and on either side of it, the right or the left, there is this caramel-colored band of material, which represents material that's being formed today with the magnetic alignment of our geographic and our magnetic poles aligned. Sometime in the past, represented by the white area here, and in diagram B here, and in diagram C here, you can see that the polarity pattern was reversed. Now, it's, it's not quite that simple in reality, and on the right side you can see an actual paleomagnetic uh, survey that was taken off the coast of Washington uh, and up into Canada. So it's a little more complex than it is simple, but the general idea is that it does support plate tectonic theory. And finally, let's look at a quick comparison of the continental lithosphere, the oceanic lithosphere, and the asthenosphere. So in the left-hand column, you see that characteristics of the continental lithosphere are that they are, that the lithosphere is brittle and rigid. It's less dense than oceanic lithosphere. It's thicker than the oceanic lithosphere at about 150 kilometers thick in some places. And it is definitely thicker beneath mountain ranges where we have those roots of the mountain ranges. The continental lithosphere, uh, along with the oceanic lithosphere, is divided into plates. Now, some plates do contain both continental and oceanic lithosphere. The oceanic lithosphere is also rigid and brittle, more dense than the continental lithosphere, thinner than the continental lithosphere, and it thins close to the mid-ocean ridge system. Contrasting that with the asthenosphere, which is ductile, which exhibits a fluid-like or plastic-like flow, it's more dense than either the oceanic or continental lithospheres. It contains small amounts of partially melted material. The lower boundary of the asthenosphere is not well-defined, and there are convection currents there that drive plate motion. So I think we've made it through some good evidence for plate tectonics, and in this picture you see a beautiful example of some pillow basalt along a mid-ocean ridge spreading center. We'll be talking about the different types of plate boundaries in our next video. But for this one, let's talk about our learning targets again. We listed and described evidence used to support the theory of plate tectonics, and we described some models explaining mechanisms for plate tectonics. So I think you're ready for your mastery check quiz, and I'll see you in class.